Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, July 19th, 2020, and here are the readings for today. First reading is from St. Paul's letter to Titus, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. Titus, my son, the saying is sure. I desire you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to apply themselves to good deeds. These are excellent and profitable to men. But avoid stupid controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels over the law, for they are unprofitable and futile. As for a man who is factious, after admonishing him once or twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is perverted and sinful. He is self-condemned. When I send Artemis and Tychicus to you, do your best to come to me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. Do your best to speed Zenus, the lawyer, and Apollos on their way. See that they lack nothing. And let our people learn to apply themselves to good deeds, so as to help the cases of urgent need and not be unfruitful. All who are with me send greeting to you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. And today's Gospel is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 19. The Lord said to his disciples, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Think not that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches men to do so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So today in the Antiochian Orthodox Church, we remember the fathers of the Fourth Ecumenical Council. It was decided at the Fourth Ecumenical Council, or really confirmed in the Fourth Ecumenical Council, that Jesus Christ is of two full natures. He is both fully God and fully human. So 100% God, 100% human. There is no mixture, there is no confusion, there is no um, percentages. He is 100% both in one person. Okay, and that's... Um, it certainly is complicated, but it it is important in terms of our understanding of just who he is. Of course, that understanding is derived from his life on earth, especially in the reflections of St. John the Theologian, who speaks at the very beginning of his gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it says later that the Word took on flesh. So we understand that the second person of the Holy Trinity is indeed in the person of Jesus Christ, the Logos, the divine Logos. Now, I'm not going to go much further, but I just want to make clear that for our purposes, we understand that he's not partially human and fully God, and he's not fully human and partially God. That's not the way we understand things. He is 100% both. And when we take a look at the epistle in the gospel today, we see in them examples of how we would um, re reflect on the ecumenical teachers, the ones who made the decisions at those ecumenical councils. They apply themselves to good deeds because those such things are excellent and profitable to men, but they avoid what is called stupid controversies and genealogies and dissensions and quarrels over the law because they are unprofitable and futile. And so the point there is that these things that cause a division in the church because of someone's theological speculation that is in error, those things are the quarrels of the law or stupid controversies or dissensions. And so it is reflected upon in a more pious and holy way that the fathers of the ecumenical councils through their prayers and through their devotion to God are able to come up with the formulas that they do in all the various ecumenical councils. That's why that's there. But in addition to that, 
they are the light of the world and we as christians are light of the world and we are to bear witnesses to the we are to bear witness be witnesses to the truth okay so when we think about what's um, the role of a christian we are as if we were a city set up on a hill and so the whole world can see what we do as our lord says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify god not you but god the father who is in heaven and then he goes on in a different vein and says, Think not that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets, for I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. And then he goes on, because what he's talking about here, or the context that he's talking, is the Sermon on the Mount. And so the things that he says after this, now immediately before this is the Beatitudes, immediately after this, are a series of admonitions about turning the other cheek and carrying the pack the extra mile, and if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. All of those things are found within the Sermon on the Mount. And if we lived by those things, two things would happen. Number one, our lives would be probably a lot less comfortable because we would be living out the kind of self-emptying life that Christ himself lived while on earth. And I'll be honest, I don't think many of us, especially me, would be able to endure such challenges easily. So that's the first thing, the uh, rigors of this. But the second is we would be being, bringing the world closer to the kingdom of heaven. If we lived out these things, we would be bringing peace where there is discord. We'd be bringing love where there is hurt. We'd be bringing consolation where there is horror. And those things would... Um, they would melt. It would be as if it was wax before a fire or darkness before light. You know, darkness flees when light is encountered, and um, the same would go if we lived out the teachings that we find there. But for our purposes, we understand that, again, the ecumenical teachers, our holy fathers, remind us about the things of theology that truly matter, that Jesus Christ himself is, again, fully God and fully human, as is, um, is, is confirmed in the ecumenical council held at Chalcedon, um, the fourth ecumenical council. But it also, we understand that the Father, God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all one in essence, which is confirmed in the councils of Nicaea, um, and I think Constantinople, the first and second ecumenical councils, when they were held, um, they speak of the three persons of the Holy Trinity and how each one of those persons is of the same nature. And so when we understand these things, um, it's challenging. And there are always ways to divide because how in the world can a human and a God, um, how, can one, how can one person contain such things? Because God is infinite and humans are limited. So wouldn't they be overwhelmed? But no, it's one of the mysteries of our faith that he was both without confusion, without mixture, and without one being overshadowed, interestingly enough, by the other. So that's what we wrestle with. And we do our best to struggle with these things. And when we come across controversies or uh, disagreements, then we gather and we attempt to um, bring light to where there's confusion so that um, people may understand. So enough reflection on the fathers of the Fourth Ecumenical Council. I pray that God will bless you and keep you and you and your family, and may his peace be with you today and always. Amen. Have a great day.